Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In the last video, I finished up hanging the drywall in the majority of the house, leaving just the bathroom. I think today what I'm gonna do is start the taping process. The butt joints require the most work, so I'm gonna start with them. I'm gonna show you the materials I got in just a second. Um, but I'd like to get the taping process started. I've got some fast setting mud that I really wanna try out. I've never used it before, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, as far as the process goes, these are your butt joints, and then these are bevels. You can see that little shadow line there. The ends of uh, sheets of drywall, the long edges, are beveled, and that allows you that space to fill in with the mud. So depending on what kind of tape you're using, your tape is covers the joint, and then this whole recessed area here gets filled in. The butt joints are just the dimension of the drywall, which is a half inch thick. So you have to build up out over that, and then you feather it out. And some people go way, way out with how far they feather it. I'll probably come out somewhere, uh, you know, maybe two feet, a little more than two feet both ways. So in the end, that joint compound will run from here all the way over here. So it's a big, gentle um, kind of raised area, and that limits any kind of shadows. You get an unevenness. Then you have your corners. In your corners, you'll put mud in your corners, and then you'll put paper tape that's bent to 90 degrees fit in there so that is how you take care of your corners. And then outside corners are done with some sort of, uh, uh, you can either just trim out around this with wood, or sometimes you'll have drywall here and this whole corner will be, uh, opening will be drywall. And for that, you use some sort of a corner bead. This particular one, it's got metal on the inside, then the outside is paper. And you can see that little raised edge there. That's to where your knife rides on that highest point and then that feathers the mud out over top this. This paper disappears into the mud and that reinforces the whole corner. So you've got metal to take the blow in the paper, kind of smooths things out, and then the paint ends up on the outside of this paper on the very, very corner versus a metal bead. And those um, over time can get dented, and of course this could too, but I've even seen those get rusty. So basically, I've never used this type and I want to try this in this job. Very quickly, let's take a look at the materials I got, then we'll get started. So I already had everything to do the job, but I bought um, some extra stuff. I got an extra bucket. I bought some extra knives. Um, here's the mud I'll be using, so I'll be mixing this up. It's 90-minute set, quick setting, uh, 90 minute quick setting mud. A little bucket to get the mixture right. And then on the left there, I've got some paper tape. That's for all my corners, or you can do the whole house with it. And in this job, I'm gonna try out uh, the mesh joint tape. So I've never used mesh before except in repair work. And I think it's real good to have around if you have a hole, you can kind of jam it up in there and mix uh, compound with it and fix, uh, you know, where a doorknob goes through a hole, uh, the wall or something. But I'm gonna try doing the majority of my joints in it. The bad thing is about it's about $9 a roll versus the uh, $3 a roll or whatever it is for the paper tape. So it's about uh, two and a half times the cost and it's 300 feet versus 500 feet. So um, that's it as far as materials goes. Got uh, more tools inside here. Let's just go ahead and get started. should have used the paper tape, but we'll see. Um, I like to try new things, but I know paper tape works good, so the mesh kind of scares me a little bit. It's one of those things that some people say is wonderful, <clears throat> and then you'll hear some professional say he would never use it, and that any cracks he ever repairs often are in mesh tape. So, we'll see. If I don't like the way this goes, I'll switch things up. I can always come back and repair it, but who wants to do that? So, 
me get some in my tray here and get going.
little boo-boo, but it'll be all right. I got my notch right for the back side of the uh, tub, but I got my board flipped all around, so my bevel's over here where you want your bevel, beveled edge along this side, but you know, once I flip it upside down, and this type of drywall being 16 some dollars a sheet, I'm just going with it. So I got your uh, bevel butt joint uh, hybrid going on here, half and half. And I just kind of uh, cut the edges back on the uh, butt joint side, the left hand side of it there. You can see the white on the board. So I'll just fill that in and just treat this whole thing like a big butt joint. So that'll be all right. It'll just take some extra work to get that done. So that's just an example of little things that happen while you're working. It's kind of hard when you're doing drywall on the ceilings. You're thinking backwards and upside down and uh, everything just gets a little weird. As soon as you think you got it, you cut it and it's all wrong. It's another day and I'm back here at the house. Uh, last I got the first coat of uh, setting compound over the mesh tape. Since then I've kind of scared myself for using the mesh tape, but I'm going to be brave and I'm going to keep going even if it messes up. I really do see it both ways. You see people say, I'm a professional that's been doing it for 15 years and I only use this tape and I'm a professional that's been doing it and I only use this other tape. So I think it goes both ways. I think the key is you definitely do have to use the hot setting mud, which I'm using 90, set, uh, 90 minute setting mud and um, making sure that I'm getting the compound through the tape and I'm pre-filling stuff when I can. This is also a renovation, not new construction. so. The house is already settled, so I'm hoping that that makes some difference. But I do have new framed walls in here, which there may be some sort of shrinkage in the lumber, but it's been a very long time since I framed these walls, so I think everything's probably fairly stable, even though heat has not been turned on. We'll just see what happens. Um, I think overall I will be fine. It's a rental house that I own, so if something happens in the future, I can address it. Hopefully it won't, though, but I do like to find out things for myself. So often I find that uh, if you just go by what people say, you're not really getting accurate information. You'll find out that they were using uh, pre-mixed mud with mesh tape that does shrink and crack. It takes days to dry. This stuff is rock hard in uh, you know a couple hours basically. Uh, a little longer to dry but it doesn't shrink and it is very hard. I am surprised just how hard it really is compared to just a lightweight pre-mixed mud. So the task for today is to finish the joint compound. Just so y'all know when I mixed up an 18 pound bag with the correct amount of water. I thought I was just gonna be able to go around and use it all up, um, but I did not have enough joints taped and it took me longer in the first place. So I'm going to get everything that I possibly can get taped taped today. I've gotten a lot of stuff out of the way. The only thing really in my way is this uh, leftover board here, but I'll flip that to another wall. Everything else has been moved um, outside so I can move around a lot faster. Um, and get everything taped. I'll probably also just mix half the bag up today, so nine pounds to the correct amount of water, and then uh, that will, I think, be way better. It doesn't take long at all to mix it up, but once it starts setting, it's setting, so I don't want to waste it, plus I just um, don't want to feel rushed to use a whole bag. I kind of want to take my time on this job and not be rushed, because if I'm rushed, I'm going to feel rushed, and that's just no fun. It's going to happen as fast as it happens anyway, so let me get started finishing up the taping.
it is the end of the day for me. About 9 o'clock, but if I mix up more, I'm not going to leave till 11. And I've got to pick some stuff up from the store and get home before a certain time. So I'm calling it for the evening. And I did a lot off camera. Um, I've done all of the corners in the house, all the inside corners, except for some in the bathroom and the laundry room. So there's a corner. There's a corner. And when I say I did the corners, I mud the corner in. I bend the tape 90 degrees, tuck it in, and then smooth it down with a knife. And then I went ahead and finished off one side. Well, the first layer on one side. So, I have got a lot of the work done now. I was hoping to get all the corners done, but I just didn't, uh, including the ones around the top. So tomorrow I'll come back, I'll finish all of the uh, inside wall corners and then the wall to ceiling corners, and then start uh, applying the second layer of uh, second coat of compound. So you can see all the corners done in here in the closet, and I did one of the corners in, or several corners in the bathroom. But there's more in there. So I'll show doing the corners in the next video. Sorry I didn't show those. Just trying to get some things done. Wanted to brush up on my technique to where I didn't look so foolish doing them. I got down to where I was doing them pretty quick. Um, I did, let's see, I did some butt joints and bevel joints and then the um, corners in this room in one 90 minute batch. And then I did all of the corners all in this room, the closet, the bathroom, and then in the kitchen in the second 90 minute batch. Um, so I mixed up half a bag at a time. Um, starts out pretty, uh, pretty, pretty soupy or, you know, more, it's, it's stiffer than soupy, but by the time I was done, it was starting to stiffen up on me. And then all of a sudden it just really is unworkable. And that's when I'm getting it out of my bucket real fast. <sighs> I guess that's it. I just want to try to maybe keep these updates a little bit more on the, uh, let me see, on a regular basis. Um, a lot of times I just kind of get sidetracked and it's a month before I'm done. Make sure I'm focused. Yeah. Sometimes I talk to the camera, it's not focused for a couple minutes. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. That last video had a lot of people fired up. I think everybody I might have sounded too defensive towards comments. Didn't mean it that way. My main kind of objective when I talk about comments like that, and I wrote this in the comments a lot in response to people saying, don't worry about the naysayers. Not worried about them. I think it's a good opportunity to talk about things. I say if one person says something, you probably got a couple thousand that are thinking the same thing. So not everybody means it in a negative way, but it's a thing to address a lot of times. Um, sometimes just somebody doesn't know. Uh, Got people from different uh, countries writing things, so the tone of the way you take their tone could be different, could be a little kid. Um, but uh, I think some of those comments are good to address. I'm not addressing so much the person who says it, but other people who read things and they go, yeah, I'm wondering the same thing. Um, but I guess that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if there's any uh, uh, business to take care of while we're here. I know the big business. I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video. We crossed the 100,000 subscriber mark. So everybody's going to get their wish. I think it was my wish too, to do the next uh, video series on the farmhouse. So as soon as this series is done, and I'm really hoping to get this house done within like the next month or so, one to two months. I really hope it's done within that time frame. But of course, I thought this whole project would take two weeks, and I was going to slap it together and just rent the thing out. But it's gone much further. But I'm glad. A lot of people are wondering, you know, why I put this much into this house. Just to kind of put that, I think, into perspective for people, I had 6,000 subscribers when I started this house. Now I have over 100,000. So finishing this house is going to be a rent check. Um, but also, building this channel is a business in itself. So by stretching this out it wasn't i didn't stretch it out on purpose it was just normal life stuff and i did two real estate deals during this time which included selling one house and then i bought renovated and rented another one and i filmed that whole series and i'll be showing all those videos as soon as this house is done so as soon as this series is done i can just start posting those the all the work is done there's someone actually renting that house already so that will be kind of neat to have that sort of 
break from having to film them and then edit them and upload them ASAP to uh, let y'all see them. And I'll go ahead and start in on the next renovation while I'm posting those. Um, so, uh, also, uh, I was on the topic of um, uh, this house taking so long. One of those other real estate deals came f directly from this house. One of the masons that worked on the house, um, uh, that was kind of a connection to a whole other real estate deal and a wholesale that house, which means I basically just sold it. I sort of bought it. Um, if you just had to look into wholesaling, I'm going to show that house, talk about that house. I did a few videos already. Um, this is last year, and I will um, kind of tell you about that process. And I'm actually writing a book on wholesaling houses as well, uh, which is another way. Um, just to let you know, I uh, made more off that deal than I paid for this house. I did it in a three-month time period, but there was only maybe one to two days worth of actual work involved in that. Most of it was just kind of waiting for things. To happen hurry up and wait kind of a situation but that happened because of this house so uh, um, that's another thing that I like about doing things a lot of people they go how does all this stuff happen to you how do you find these houses how do you do this it's just because I'm involved that's the one of the biggest answers now there are certain ways just to go out and find certain things but a lot of times opportunity comes from just action in general it doesn't have to be like I am looking for this specific thing I hope I find it just start doing something that's kind of related to what you want to be doing and usually something will end up kind of uh, taking hold. Um, and uh, and it also just kind of keeps you in the, the right mindset, kind of keeps you sharp, keeps you kind of uh, on top of things because it's not only why you're renovating a house, you kind of have to stay kind of... Uh, doing this type of thing is like anything else, I think, where your mind has to be in it just as much as doing the actual work but i'll start preaching again like i did in the last video i don't want to do that um we'll go ahead and call it thank you all again 100,000 subscribers uh, uh it's a huge deal and my other channel it took like five or six years for it to get that to get that size i think it's 117 118,000 now this channel went from 6,000 to 100,000 in like a year and a half or a year and three quarters or something like that so that's really fast and this one's rate of growth is right up there i'm going to come up with some sort of goal for the next house to try to uh, get to a certain milestone for that one as well and just see if i can uh, help push that along with y'all's help so thank you all for watching again if you have any questions comments leave them below um, links will be in the description below as well i usually always mention this and i'll mention it again I wrote an ebook on how to buy cheap houses, and at the end of this video, I'll have a suggested video that if you had not watched it before, it's a picture of me in a suit, I think you will enjoy it. Uh, we'll just let you know now the whole first part of it is a joke, so I hope you uh, realize that and don't get turned off. I end that video with talking seriously about the book. It's for sale on Amazon as well as my website as a PDF version. So you can read it on your computer, your phone, or you can print it off if you want a hard copy. And I'll eventually do a paperback version through Amazon as well. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.